invencible si de fonda cosa Good morning, church. How are you today? Hope you're keeping well, and uh, it's a bit windy out there, but hope you have uh, enjoyed the morning so far. And as we come together today to worship the Lord, uh, very warm welcome to you. And uh, those of you who might be joining with us via Facebook, very warm welcome to you too, to worship the Lord. You are very much part of the larger family of God no matter where in the world you might be joining us from. So we welcome you to worship the Lord today. And as we come together, we are uh, continually reminded of uh, that we are in this uh, strange time of COVID. So keep a safe distance and face coverings. Uh, 
and uh, also as we greet or say hello to one another, keep your distance or do a social distance manner way. Uh, also this morning we come together and to worship the Lord. Um, let us hear the invitation as Psalm. Psalmist invites us to come into the presence of God. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry ground. Come, come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this privilege for us to be together in your house, to worship, to give you glory, and give you thanks. We worship you, God, that you are our rock of salvation. You are our refuge. You are our strength. You are our maker. You are our great God, great king above all gods. We worship you, God, today. And we acknowledge you that you are our maker. You loved us so much that you gave us yourself in Jesus Christ, bringing us in relationship with you through his death and resurrection so that we can be together here this day to worship you, give you thanks, and praise your holy name. May our worship, may our coming together and reading of your word and learning from your word and breaking of the bread together may, rem may remind us and enable us to remember Jesus and to walk in his path with the help and guidance of the Holy Spirit. We worship you. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 So let's just turn around and uh, say hello to one another and greet one another. And then we will sing our first song after that, Blessed Assurance. Um, tell us what's up online if you want to wave at the camera. Say hello to Jill. Hi, Jill. Good to have you as a part of our fellowship. Yeah. Yeah. So great. So good to see you all. Yeah. Let us sing our first song, Blessed Assurance. Is that correct song? Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a forte. Of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. from 
beautiful words of this song. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Beautiful words and may it be true for us as we continue to live life, as God blesses with gift of breath and life, that it would be, he would be our story and he would be our song. As we come this day, that story, story of love, which God demonstrated to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And he taught us, as we hear the teaching of Christ, Jesus said that a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Spirit of God, search our hearts. So we come in a time of prayer this morning. And let us reflect on these words of commandment of Jesus. Loving God requires that we love one another. And that we could do this morning by offering prayer for one another, praying for our neighbors and our people in Blockhouse Bay. We can pray for one another in the fellowship of the Church of the Savior. We can pray for our nation, we can pray for as an act of love for our neighboring countries like Tonga, which are trying to make life out of the natural disaster. We can pray as an act of love for our world as it battles the wars, wars of health, wars of 
national boundaries, wars and violence. And also we can pray for as an act of our love for one another, for especially for our fellow brothers and sisters in the church who suffer and who are persecuted. And especially this week in Pakistan, as in the city of Peshawar, as the church was attacked and the priest was murdered. So let's pray for the Diocese of Peshawar and the church there to be strong in these trying times. Let's pray for one another. And in this time of prayer, as you think of all through these various topics, the Lord lays on your heart to pray for something specific. You are welcome to pray from wherever you are, where you sit it. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we worship you, God, that you are love. And you loved us so much that you give us your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom you called us to be your people. We thank you for that gift of love which you poured out into our hearts by your Holy Spirit, enabling us to love and to serve you and to love one another. 
We pray for our fellowship together as a church of the Savior, that we may continue to, Lord, grow in your likeness and in your love. And we may, by your strength, O Holy Spirit, live out that love in our community and in our nation, that those who need your loving touch may be manifested and reached out through our lives. Whether it be a word of kindness or whether it is an act of kindness, help us by your spirit to be your agent of love, compassion, grace and mercy, and truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We worship you, God, for today. We bless your name. We thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for all those who are able to join with us in various ways, and especially through the Facebook. We pray that, Lord, you may bless their fellowship together with us. Lead us, Lord. Each day, help us to take steps by your grace and your mercy for your gospel through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We're going to read from the scriptures from the Bible. And this morning, our reading is from Psalm 92, verses 12 to 15. And then the second one will be from 1 Peter 5, 1 to 4. Uh, these are short passages, so let's read together. So you can see the screen, the words are on the screen. Or if you can't see screen, you have your Bible with you, you can read from there. And let us read in unison, everyone together, the scripture for us this morning. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming, The Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's suffering, and the one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not loading it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us. Thanks be to God. And this morning, it's a privilege to have Lindsay speak to us from the scripture. So as Lindsay comes, let us pray. Father, we pray that you may bless Lindsay's preparation and her sharing with us, that we would be edified, encouraged, and strengthened in your word to live for you. Bless her by your spirit, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Shahi. Yes, I quite agree with your comments about the lyrics of that hymn. They are beautiful and they are so relevant. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. And when we talk about lyrics, I'd like to share something with you. When I drive my car, I like to listen to a station that plays old sort of tunes, 60s, 70s, 80s. I do this so I can relax, I can sing along, I know all the tunes and all the words. When I come to the lights, I can do a little dance. If somebody cuts me off, I can relax by just singing. But the other week, 
there I was, doing precisely this. And I actually listened to the lyrics of one of the songs. I'd like to play a little snippet of it for you. Thank you, Jackie. flame is strong cause we may not be the young ones very long right. so I actually listened to the lyrics singing away and then light bulb moment both brain cells fired at once which is hard for me hey guess what I am not the young one anymore. Now, I know this will come as a surprise to some of you. It certainly came as a surprise to me. When you're young, you think you'll never get old. When you're old, you don't really know, notice it because you still feel as you feel. But it did set me on a course of thinking about how our society is so attuned to a youth culture. Even back in my days, tunes, will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Well, I'm happy I got past 64 and I was still needed and fed. <laughs> you know, age is a much misused word in our society. It always holds a connotation of a use-by date. In a world full of numbers and standards and steps and sore knees, how fooled we may be into thinking that our service to God, our families and friends and our society has less relevance. Youth is marvellous. Youth is horrible, talking from experience. I do not want to be 17, 25, 40 again. There were troubles in my life. There are troubles now, but I don't want to repeat those. I have grown through them. But the young are marvellous. The other week, Thomas, our youth pastor, was preaching and playing and leading. <laughs> oh, wow. you know? And I thought, yes, isn't that great? What leadership, what leadership is coming through in our young people. But that leadership does not negate our leadership as elders, not negate what we can contribute and serve into the church. Our paths of contributing, our way of contributing may be different. I don't see myself taking the youth group on a tramp through the bush. I don't see myself doing anything terribly physical involving sore knees. But we all have our paths. None of us are the same. We are all created individually. And isn't that just wonderful? And yet we can move as one when needed. The narrator of Ecclesiastes puts it quite succinctly. There is a time for everything and a time for every purpose or activity under heaven. Now, if you could hear that phrase without going in your mind and saying the words, turn, 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 then I suggest you 
have forgotten your six days. You know, nowhere in the Bible does it say that service and worship ends with a certain number. We may retire from work. In my case, I retired from teaching and then I retired from management. It didn't mean I didn't do anything. It just meant I changed my direction of what I did. Nowhere in the Bible does it say three strikes and you're out. On the contrary, we are encouraged to celebrate all the seasons of our lives. Job says, wisdom belongs to the aged and understanding to the old. I'm still working on the wisdom and the understanding. It's part. I am a story in progress. I haven't got there. And I think we're all a bit like that. King Solomon sought the expertise of the older men to help make important decisions about the kingdom of Israel. Why? Because he considered them wise. And what was wisdom built on? Experience. Worship. Not by thinking, oh, we've done it all, we know the answers. We do not. We are a work in progress. But we can contribute mightily all the experiences of our lives up till now, the bad as well as the good. Because if you don't have stumbling blocks, how do you learn? We weren't created to hide. We weren't created to retreat as the seasons of life revolve around us. We can always grow. We can always serve. Look around. And with one or two exceptions, I see snow-capped heads. We, you, are the shepherds of the church. You inspire the church with love, with knowledge, with support, with human qualities, with human frailties and examples. For perhaps it is a sign of wisdom, the true wisdom of being older, when we can say we did not get it right all the time. We made mistakes. But in making the mistakes, we didn't want to leave them. We wanted to learn from them. Maybe, even as our bodies slow, we can renew our strength in the Lord. We can soar on wings like eagles. We can run and not get weary. We can walk and not grow tired. All of us here are serving the church. I ask you, never stop. Your being, your worshipping is such an active support to everyone else around you. We will always worship. We will always support each other. Some will serve by direct discipleship. Some very actively, some very vocally, but all by presence, by your presence. It is your presence which inspires and comforts us. And we can, as they say, grow older gracefully. Thank you, Jackie. I thought that was quite good. I think there's a bit of a Veronica in all of us, isn't there? I don't think God quite 
expects us to change from caterpillars to butterflies, because a butterfly is actually no better than a caterpillar, just different. But we are doing precisely what God wants us to do. We are where God wants us to be. Sometimes where he wants us to be is in a place that's hard to go through. And we just cling to the knowledge that God is always with us. And this too shall pass. I remember a member of our congregation who has passed, two members had come to mind. One was Jane. Some of you will remember, all of you I think would remember Jane. Right up to her very last, she, despite physical comebacks, worshipped the Lord. Her brain, her tongue, her writing little notes of encouragement. Another one I remember is Nancy, who, despite so many um, physical hurdles, was just an inspiration. You don't have to jump and sing and dance. We do worship the Lord, but we can do it without the physical sometimes. It says in Proverbs 20, 29, <clears throat> the glory of the young is in their strength. The gray hair of experience is the splendor of the old. We are us. Old is a status to which the Lord is leading us and has led us. It is not a used by date by society. It is something we celebrate. We celebrate because we've got here and we know we are going to go there. And in the middle of overreaching all of this, God has been, is, and will be with us. In times of trial, when we were teenagers, he was there. In young adulthood, he was there. Older adulthood, he is there. And now, at all ages, we realize it's exactly who he is and why we are here. And we ask, why were we put on this earth? One reason we are put on this earth to worship and glorify God. Glorify God as God the Father, as God the Son, and as God the Holy Spirit. Whilst we are not the young ones anymore, we still follow our paths by acting justly, loving mercy, and walking humbly without God. Perfect submission, Jesus is mine. What a story of love divine. Let's pray. Father God, our creator and redeemer, as the sun dispels the night's darkness, we wake and thank you for each new day of our lives. Through life's travails and weaknesses, we know, Lord, that you never leave us and you send your grace to surround us and we live in your purpose. Perfect submission. Jesus is mine. Amen. And just to prove my point, I need the lectern as a support to get down again. Thank you very much, Lindsay, for sharing with us those precious thoughts. And indeed, no matter what stage and age we are, we are of the Lord, and we continue to serve and to live for God. Um, there is never a retirement in human life. It's just the word economy has 
constructed, so don't restrict yourself with that word, because life is given to us to live no matter what stage we are. So are we going to focus on the Lord, and as we come to prepare ourselves and partake into the communion, uh, we're going to give through our offertory. We don't pass the plate in these days, but there is a box placed at the back of the church. You are welcome to place your offerings into that and um, uh, yeah, and to support the church that way or if you're giving through online way, uh, thank you for doing that way. Uh, let me pray for our offerings and then we will sing our song. Father, we thank you for gift of income and resources you give us and you enable us to serve through that by giving into your kingdom through the administration of the church for your mission, for your gospel, and for your worship here at Blockhouse Bay and beyond. Bless each person who either gives here or through the online base. Bless every offering for your kingdom through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a beautiful song. Uh, I mean, all songs are beautiful uh, written, but this is one of the favorite family songs, Be Thou My Wisdom. So let us sing that for the glory of God.
this day as we come to the table we acknowledge and we remember Jesus as our vision and be empowered by his spirit to walk in his path we come acknowledging that we are his children but yet we fall short so we come in confession this day happy are those whose sins are forgiven whose wrongs are pardoned so i will confess my sins to the lord i will not conceal my wrongdoings god forgives and heals us so we pray together we need your healing merciful god give us true repentance some sins are plain to us some escape us some we cannot face forgive us set us free to hear your word to us set us free to serve you god forgives you forgive others forgive yourself through christ god has put away your sin so approach your god in peace the spirit of god be with you god's spirit is with us lift up your hearts lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give thanks and praise it is indeed right always and everywhere to give thanks to you the true and living god through jesus christ you are the source of life for all creation and you made us in your own image when we sinned and turned away you called us back to yourself and gave us your son to share our human nature in jesus is coming among us the day of our deliverance has dawned and through him you will make all things new when he comes in power and majesty to judge the world in him you have made us a holy people by sending upon us your holy and life giving spirit and so we proclaim your glory as we say together holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest to you be glory almighty god because on the night before he died your son jesus christ took bread and the cup and when he had given you thanks he broke bread and shared with his disciples so today here in remembrance of jesus today we take a bread break it and eat it which is given for us we proclaim the mystery of our faith christ has died christ is risen christ will come in glory therefore loving god recalling now christ's death and resurrection and looking forward to his coming in glory we ask you to accept this our sacrifice of praise send your holy spirit upon us that we may be fed with the body and blood of your son and be filled with your life and goodness unite us in christ and give us your peace all this we ask through your son jesus christ our lord to whom with you and the holy spirit be all honor and glory now and forever amen we say the prayer our lord jesus taught us our father in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us do not bring us to the test but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen so friends draw near and receive the body and blood of our savior jesus christ and remembrance that he died for us let us feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving 
So as you know, our practice now, come the hippie way, sanitize your hand, and receive by standing communion in one kind only. So come God's people to receive God's heavenly food. Let us pray. Most loving God, creator and redeemer, we give you thanks for this foretaste of your glory, and we pray together. Through Christ and with all your saints, we offer ourselves and our lives to your service. Send us out in the power of your spirit to stand with you in your world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Just a few reminders, uh, very warm welcome to you again, and those of you might be watching us uh, from across the world, from any different parts of the world, very warm welcome to you, and uh, thank you for joining us uh, in this service today. Uh, and uh, just a few reminders is that, uh, as we know, Tonga, which experienced the natural disaster of tsunami and the earth, no, sorry, volcano eruption, um, so Anglican Mission is working with the Anglican Diocese of Polynesia to help the communities in Tonga. Uh, if you, uh, there is information in the newsletter for you uh, how you can be uh, help uh, uh, in this regard. So check out the newsletter for that. And staff have been replanning and planning and replanning. We've been going through this cycle of depending on what changes happening for us in the 
restriction wise. So some activities are now on hold while we assess safety of returning. So was the newsletter for the start dates and uh, for the different activities and for the events. And also if you would like to have an updated Paris prayer plan, the link is in the newsletter. Otherwise, if you need printed one, let us know and we might be able to help you with that. And also, word for today is now available uh, and uh, is to be posted. So, yeah, so you can check out for those things. So, those are the few notices. Um, and so, as we go out into this summer season, stay safe, look after yourself. Um, and uh, as we go out, we sing our grace, words of grace together. So where you are seated or you want to stand up or you're looking all around, uh, let us sing this together. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forevermore and evermore and evermore. Amen. So friends, go forth into the world and in peace and in joy. We go in the name of Christ. Have a blessed day. Thank you.